Goldsmith here. Today I am showing you a really simple recipe that you too can make at home. It is Marley's world famous mac and cheese. All right, so maybe the world doesn't know about it yet, but it's super easy and I can't wait for you to try it at home. Let me show you what you'll need. Elbow macaroni noodles, milk, butter or margarine, your choice, a little sour cream, salt, pepper, and of course, all the cheese, whatever type you prefer. I like to do a mix of mild cheddar, sometimes sharp, and a little Kobe Jack. But my secret ingredient? Smoked Gouda. Oh yeah, shh, don't tell anyone. So first you wanna get enough water in your pot so that you can boil the noodles. And then you bring it over to the stove. You can start boiling the water here, and I always like to throw in a little bit of salt just to get that water boiling. All right, so while we wait for the water to boil, you can go ahead and start grating your smoked gouda. Now you're gonna pour in your noodles. Okay, so after you've set your noodles aside to cool, you're gonna dump them into a big bowl. And then you're gonna season your noodles a little bit with salt and pepper. And don't be stingy on the seasoning. And remember that your cheese holds salt in it, so you don't have to put too much salt over in your noodles. I'm gonna use margarine. Spoonful. I think I'll go back in for another one. Make sure your noodles get saturated with that. And then I like to add sour cream. Another two hefty spoonfuls. And then you're gonna add your milk. I don't ever measure anything, but you'll probably use somewhere between a half a cup to three fourths cups of milk. Now that that's all mixed in, you'll go in and start adding your cheese. And just start stirring it all around. In my opinion, you can never have enough cheese, but some people, don't like it extremely cheesy. And then with your smoked Gouda, you are going to make sure that you don't use all of it. You are going to want to save some of it for your topping. So we're now going to add just a little bit of that into the mix. Okay, so this is what you ultimately want to achieve once you're done mixing. And then you're going to transfer it into your baking dish. Of course, I forgot one thing. You're gonna wanna use an egg at the end that you mix up, and then you're gonna pour over your macaroni and cheese mix inside your baking dish. You just pour it over like so. And if you want, you can poach a few holes in it to let it sink down to the bottom of your dish. And the very last thing you're gonna do before you put it in the oven is sprinkle a little bit more cheese on the top. And it's gonna give you that nice golden brown effect once it bakes. And then you can also throw it on broil, on a low broil for an additional five to 10 minutes at the very end. And I promise you, you will end up with perfection. Just doing a check-in on the dishes and they look like they are cooking wonderfully. I've been cooking them on 350 and it's gonna be for a total of about 30 minutes. And here's the final product. Hey everyone, what's happening? This is Nico here. We're gonna make you a fancy grilled cheese today. I roasted a turkey yesterday, Kelly made some sourdough bread, so 
we got some leftover things we're gonna make a delicious grilled cheese and turkey sandwich with. I've got my bread slices ready. I've got them prepped a little bit with um, some Duke's light mayo on there. On the inside of the sandwich, we're gonna have some extra sharp cheddar cheese. We have some herb crusted goat cheese, which is the most delicious. And then we have some uh, chopped up turkey with some shallots, some garlic, and my favorite hot sauce these days, Trader Joe's Green Dragon hot sauce. So I got my butter going here. Um, we want to get that butter going nice and melty, so that way when we take our grilled cheese, we just plop it right in there. As you know, putting mayonnaise on the back side of the bread makes it get that nice, crispy, brown happy. Drop down the pan, move it around a little bit. I got my heat on medium, medium low. I'm gonna go ahead and take my cheddar cheese. This is a nice little thick cut of cheddar cheese. Put it in there, got a little extra square to fit the bread perfectly. Put that on and push it down just a little bit. On top of that, we're gonna put our little turkey, shallot, garlic mixture. Spread that out a little bit here. A little bit gets in the pan, that's okay. You get those nice little crispies. Then I'm gonna take some of that goat cheese, slice it off, kind of plop it in the middle there. So that way it gets nice and creamy when we put that top bread. Don't worry, my hands are nice and washed and sanitized. I'm gonna take my other bread, stick it right on the top so you got a little weight happening. You can use that same nice you use for the cheese, press it down a little bit. Make sure you move it around in the pan so you're getting a nice off that uh, butter action all the way around. Mmm, the sizzle and pop is absolutely delicious. I'm already salivating knowing how good this is gonna be. Now we're gonna take this sandwich, make sure you check the bottom, is it good to go? Yeah. Get a little bit more brown action on there. I like to do the double flip. People like to do a one-time flip. So I'm gonna take it, take my sandwich, flip it over in the pan there, give it a little press down. Get that knife, clean it off a little bit, just in case you need a little extra butter. And as Paula Dean, a bunch of other people taught us, you can always use extra butter. I mean, we are in the South. If you're in the South and you're not cooking with butter, I don't even know if you're doing it right. I like to press it down. Ooh, there's a piece of turkey. If you don't sample while you're cooking, are you even cooking? Press it down a little bit. You want to make sure that that goat cheese gets melty and nice and creamy. Make sure that cheddar cheese melts a little bit. Mixes in with that turkey real good. Ooh, it's got a nice spice to it. I'm really excited about this one, y'all. So here's that double flip I was telling you about, just to make sure everything is good to go. I like to get mine to where it's kind of buttered bread, but you're not looking to where it's real butter. All right, this one's awesome, it's coming out. Take it off there, make sure you turn your burner off, number one rule. People have uh, the discussion of diagonal, sideways, however you want to cut it. With this type of bread, I just like to cut it right down the middle. Then we have our sandwich. Let's get a close up here. So we got that thick cheddar, the, the goat cheese, the turkey on there. Everything looks absolutely delicious. Oh yeah. That's where it's at. Probably too big of a bite to take on camera, but got that nice spice from the green dragon sauce, turkey, everything's great. Hope you have a great day. If you need any tips making grilled cheese, holla at your boy Nico. When you first found out we were going to be quarantined for a while, what were some of your thoughts regarding food? Was it, oh no, I'm going to have to be cooking every time, or what am I going to do? What variety can I offer? Fortunately for me, my pantries were pretty good. Um, they were stocked well, and so I've been able to draw from those. So even now that we can get to the grocery stores or have them delivered, uh, it sometimes is a challenge to come up with something unique and different. I want to show you today something that is so simple, you're not going to believe how easy it is. Most of you have seen these salads, uh, pasta salads at the grocery store, and uh, the suddenly pasta salad and the classic variety is what we're going to be using today. I'm just going to prepare that according to the box directions, except I don't want you to cook it. Uh, as long as they say. I cook mine about 10 minutes because I want it to still have that firmness to it. If you cook it any longer and it's mushy, it's not going to hold up well. So I take some of those vegetables that have been hanging out in my refrigerator. Uh, carrot, uh, sad looking celery, uh, 
roast, uh, bed, red bell peppers uh, that sometimes kind of get neglected back in the back of the refrigerator, and a can of cannellini beans. Now, if you don't have cannellini, you can use Great Northern, you can use um, garbanzos, just about any kind of bean that you might like in your salad. Prepare that pasta, which is what I've already done right here, and you can see that I've added the, the carrots, etc., to it. We're gonna add that to this one can of beans that I've already rinsed and drained, and, whoop, still hot. So, what we do is we're gonna add these and then we're gonna stir it up really well. Add the dressing that comes with that pasta salad in the box, which is plenty. We're gonna stir that around and toss it with the hot pasta. Don't rinse your pasta. Uh, even though the box tells you to do that, don't do that. And we're gonna let that cool down. You can serve this at room temperature. You can serve it cold. It's great to have in the summertime because uh, you know it doesn't have any dairy in it. Uh, but it, what you've done is you've really made a meal out of this pasta salad. It's got lots of protein in it. If you wanted to add some meat-based protein, you certainly could. Ham would be good, I think. Chicken would be good. If you don't have this and you still want to make this salad, you can still do it. All you need is your pasta, whatever shape, form, or fashion that you might have, and some bottled Italian dressing. Just make it up for using that, and you've got essentially the same thing. You're using up those items in your pantries, and you've created something that I think all of the members of your family will enjoy. I really like to make this up and have it handy and keep it in, in the refrigerator for summer meals, you know, when it's so hot especially. I know we're all looking forward to the times when we can get back together. But in the meantime, you go to your pantry, use up those things that are there, use a little creativity, try something a little bit different. It's okay. Use the skills that you have and the ingredients that you have, and you can still put a good a meal on the table. I hope you enjoy uh, learning uh, more good recipes, finding out how to use your pantries. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Thanks. Hey everyone, my name is Zara Bossi and I'm here to teach you a really quick and easy dinner time recipe and it comes together fast, it's really delicious and usually you can use everything that's in your pantry. We're making salmon cakes tonight and here are the ingredients you need. I like to get this canned salmon, two sleeves of your favorite buttery crackers, some mayo, the chunky garlic paste, Next, you can use either chopped up parsley, cilantro, red onions, or even green onions. Okay, so we're gonna get started. What I've done is I've gone ahead and taken the salmon out of the can, and we've got it kind of mashed up, and this all comes together pretty quickly. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your buttery crackers, whichever ones you choose. I like to crush them up right in the package. This is your recipe. I'm just giving you a little bit of a foundation, but this is yours, make it whatever you want. And then all you're gonna add to it is salt and pepper. And whether you chose green onions or parsley or white onions or red onions, that's when you're gonna put this in. Easy enough. Now we're gonna do my favorite garlic paste. Like I said, a couple of tablespoons, the more garlic, the better for me, but. You can do however much you'd like. So I like to start off with about a quarter cup of mayo, which is about two big spoonfuls, and then just see how the consistency looks. And I'm trying to be all fancy for the camera, but realistically, I just dive in with my hands. So we're gonna jump in. And you don't want it to be too wet because what's gonna happen is whenever you fry these up, they're all gonna fall apart. So make sure that if you've already used up your crackers and you don't have any more, get some of those breadcrumbs. Start off with just a couple of tablespoons worth and just see. All right, so we're gonna get this stirred up and then we're gonna form our patties. Now that we've got the consistency that we're looking for, we're gonna make about six to eight thick salmon patties. Um, we're having them as an entree, so I like them the size of my palm and a little bit thicker, but if you wanna use them as an appetizer, you could definitely do thinner. Okay, all the patties are ready, and we're gonna heat up our cast iron skillet with a little bit of canola oil so we can pan fry all of these. When you get ready to fry these up, make sure that you don't overcrowd them in the pan, so that way they can cook a little bit evenly and they'll be done around the same time. 
All right, I think these are about ready to be flipped. You want them nice and golden brown, and I'll show you in a second exactly how amazing these look. These are perfectly golden brown now, and you want to flip them and get the same color on the other side. These are already cooked, so you want to make sure that you just heat all the way through. Once they're all done, plate them up on your favorite platter or plate, and these are best served with a salad, as salmon burgers, or with your favorite grilled vegetables. And if you have any other questions or comments, or you just want to understand more about this and make it a healthier version, you can find me on Instagram at Zara Made It. Hey everyone, Denise Albert with Cooking in Bloom in my backyard. We're gonna cook together. Today I have a recipe that's actually a family recipe that goes back to my childhood. This is a fried rice recipe that we used to have often in my home while I was growing up. I've put a little twist on it today and I'm gonna add some fermented kimchi because of the health benefits. Tons of probiotics that are really good for our gut. I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil, and you wanna do this on a high heat, because this is a stir-fry method. My mom would always do this, and I didn't understand why, but now I do know. You wanna do the rice the night before and let it sit out, because it'll still be warm in the morning to use, but also all of the starches from those rice kernels will make this rice a little stickier, which is what you want. So what I want to start out with is some onion. Now you can use green onion here. I've just got a little bit of white onion. And then I'm going to add some ham. This is just a quarter cup of ham, just a little bit for flavor. A little bit of ham, bacon, all of those cured meats goes a long way to flavor a dish. So you don't need much. And I'm just going to stir fry this. Now this was a family favorite recipe. My sister and I loved this. When my mom would say, oh, I'm gonna make fried rice tonight, we'd get so excited. And the story goes, when I was in junior high, my mom decided to stay at home and she started a little babysitting business in our home. And the first kids that she babysat was a family that had moved to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where I'm from, from China. And these two kiddos, they were so sweet, but they couldn't speak much English. They didn't like American food, so every day their mom would make them some delicious looking Chinese food so that they would actually eat something. And we were just so intrigued. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, that food looks so good. And then she taught my mom how to cook it. So my mom would actually go over to her house. She taught my mom how to make this rice. She taught my mom how to make these delicious, authentic egg rolls. This is such an interesting way, you know, of course, to connect with people and how we were able to connect with these folks from China. So I've got this cooked off. You can see that it's uh, browned a little bit. The onion is translucent. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of the rice. I'm going to eyeball it, maybe a cup and a half of rice. And then we're just going to stir fry that again on high heat. All right, so we just want that to warm through. And I wish you all could be here because I can smell that. There's really nothing better than caramelized onion and ham. <laughs> So now what I want to um, add is the egg. And I've just got egg here whisked. Nothing in it, no seasoning, no milk, no nothing. We'll just add that to the side and we'll just let that kind of cook. And you just need to incorporate it into that rice. Oh wow, it looks so good, so good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the peas. These are just frozen peas. And I've got about a half a cup here. 
And then for a pop of color, I decided to add some shredded carrots. Add a quarter of a cup or, you know, a half a cup. You can add as much veg as you want. And now for the kimchi. Now the kimchi, like I said, is fermented. It's absolutely delicious in a lot of different recipes, but I decided to add it here today because I thought it would go so well. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of kimchi to the side. It's cabbage, onion, and carrot. It has been fermented in a, a vinegar. And I wanna show you, here's my sesame seed oil. And oh gosh, this is just so delicious as a finishing oil. You just add just a drizzle to the top. This is delicious, you guys. Brings back memories. Thanks for joining me today in my backyard. This was fun. Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. This is the one place I used to spend the least amount of time possible, but ever since we've been stuck in our homes, we've all been trying new things, and for me, it's cooking. It used to be that if it had five ingredients or more, you would not find me making it, but I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone a little bit, so today we are making easy sesame chicken with the emphasis on the word easy. So here are the ingredients. We have the chicken, of course. You're gonna need one egg, some cornstarch, salt and pepper, cooking oil, and then on this side, I'm gonna make some fried rice. For the sauce, we're gonna use some soy sauce, a little bit of water, toasted sesame oil, brown sugar, rice vinegar, ginger, garlic, sesame seeds, and some more cornstarch. First thing I'm gonna do is make the sauce. I think the more mess you make, the better it tastes. We're gonna add the battered chicken, and we're gonna pour it on in a single layer. So right now we're letting one side cook, and then in just a few minutes, we're gonna flip it. It kinda reminds me of funnel cake kind of bubbling up over here. So this part, you're gonna have to be really careful. You're gonna flip the chicken and you're gonna break up the pieces into small clumps as you flip. So you're gonna kind of section it off, but try and keep the egg around the chicken as much as possible. So once the chicken is cooked golden brown on each side, we're gonna grab that sauce we made earlier and pour it over our chicken. And it smells so good. There you have it, easy sesame chicken made by yours truly. Now who's gonna clean up this mess? Not me. Hey y'all, my name is Ben Keller and I'm here to show you all how to make one of my absolute favorite Italian dishes spaghetti carbonara. It's simple, it's delicious, I can guarantee it's going to satisfy everybody at your dinner table tonight. So let's go ahead and get started and get right down to it. You will need 12 ounces of spaghetti, 8 ounces of diced pancetta, prosciutto, or bacon, 1 shallot diced, 3 garlic cloves minced, 1 cup of grated parmesan, 4 large egg yolks, the juice of 1 lemon, half a cup of chopped parsley, and then 1 cup of frozen green peas. All right, so first you're going to bring a large pot of water to a rolling boil and add a good amount of salt to that water. Pasta water should be nice and salty so that the spaghetti takes on a good flavor. Spaghetti on its own doesn't really have a lot of flavor, so we gotta make sure that that water is nice and salted. So while your pasta cooks, heat another pan 
over medium heat and that's where we're going to add either your prosciutto, pancetta, or bacon. Either one is fine, it just depends on what you can find at the grocery store. All three will taste delicious. So we're going to cook this until it's nice and crispy and then we'll remove it from the pan. So while your meat is cooking and crisping up, you can go ahead and start preparing the egg sauce for the carbonara. In a mixing bowl, add the egg yolks, the parmesan, and the lemon juice, and season with salt and pepper. Whisk it until all ingredients are combined. It's not necessarily going to be smooth, just make sure that everything is combined into a nice mixture. You can go ahead and set it aside for now, and then we can get back to our meat and then start adding in the other ingredients. So once the meat is nice and crisped up, we can go ahead and remove it from the pan. So just use a slotted spoon, remove it from the pan because we want to reserve all of that excess fat and grease because that's just going to add extra flavor to our pasta and to our sauce when we actually add everything back into this pan. Uh, so go ahead and scoop it out, uh, put it on a paper plate and then just reserve it for later. Once you've got everything removed, go ahead and put the pan back on your stove and lower that heat down to a medium low and then add a little bit of extra uh, olive oil and then we're going to add our shallot into the pan. So we're going to cook this until our shallots start to turn translucent and even begin to caramelize a little bit so you should see a little bit of browning. After that, we're going to add in our garlic and then cook for an additional minute and then everything will be good to go and we can add in all of our extra ingredients. Alright, so we're ready to start building our spaghetti carbonara. Go ahead and add your meat back into the pan with the shallots and the garlic. Remember, keep it over a low heat and then you can go ahead and add in your frozen green peas. Remember, we want to do keep this on a low heat so that we just warm up the peas and we don't necessarily want to cook them. After that, go ahead and get your pasta. So we're not actually going to drain it, we're going to pull it straight out of the water and put it in the pan. The reason we do that is because we want some of that nice starchy pasta water to get into the pan with all of our other ingredients. So don't worry if water sloshes or splashes over into the pan, that is perfectly okay. That's going to help thicken up our sauce and just make it even more delicious. Once you've got the pasta in there, go ahead and start mixing it around. Get in there with some tongs and make sure that pasta gets coated in everything. Okay, we are finally ready to add our delicious carbonara sauce. So first though, we need to make sure that we temper those eggs by adding in some of that reserved pasta water. It doesn't take a lot. You just need a little bit to make sure you smooth everything out. If you don't do this, you're basically going to end up with scrambled eggs and pasta and nobody wants that. Once you've tempered the eggs and made the sauce, go ahead and pour it in. Start mixing everything together so that the pasta gets completely coated. Go ahead and add half of that parsley into the pasta in the pan and mix everything so that it's nice and coated. Now you're ready to plate. Go ahead and get out some of that pasta into a bowl and then top with a little bit of extra Parmesan cheese and then the remaining parsley and you are ready to eat. That's it, as easy as that. Hope you all enjoyed watching the video. I am going to dig out. Hey y'all, I'm Elizabeth from ElizabethFinchWellness.com. I'm a certified health coach, a wellness blogger, and a recipe developer. And today I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite superfood energy bites. I love this snack for an afternoon snack to just get a little boost of energy and it's loaded with nutrition and foods that are so good for your body and they're super easy to make. So I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so I'm using a food processor. That's really the only kitchen tool you'll need. Um, we're just gonna throw everything in there and let it mix up. So first I'm starting with a fourth cup of ground flaxseed. You wanna make sure you're using ground flaxseed or also it's called flaxseed meal, but we want it to be ground. I've also got a fourth cup of almond butter. I'm using crunchy, but you could use crunchy or creamy, just whatever you like. We've got a half a cup of rolled oats. These are full of fiber and provide so much energy. 
We're gonna use two tablespoons of maple syrup just to provide a little bit of sweetness, but that's really not much for this entire recipe. The maple syrup is also loaded with minerals. And then we're gonna add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a tablespoon of cacao powder, so energizing and full of so many great ingredients. So what I'm gonna do now is put the lid on my food processor and I'm just gonna pulse it long enough to let all of the ingredients start to come together so that it makes like a chunky mixture. So here we go. All right, so it's gonna be a little bit dry when we start. We're gonna add just a little bit of warm water to let it all come together or to help it all come together, but we don't wanna add too much. So I'm gonna start with just about a tablespoon of warm water and then we'll see how it does with that. We're just gonna pulse it again. Scrape down the sides. You can check the texture to see if it's going to stick together and I think that this is perfect. So I just used about a tablespoon of warm water. Okay, now what we're going to do is to roll this mixture into about 10 uniform size chunks, little snack balls. So they're gonna be not too big, about this big. So we're gonna make 10 of those. Okay, now I've got about two tablespoons of shredded coconut and I'm just gonna roll my little uh, superfood snack bites into the coconut and then press them into these perfect little round balls. If you don't love coconut, you can skip over this step or you could even use something else you love more like chopped nuts or cacao nibs or cacao powder or again, you could just leave it off. Okay, I'm finished rolling my superfood energy bites in the shredded coconut. And now we're just gonna pop them into the refrigerator, let them set up for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes. If you want it to be faster, you can put them into the freezer and we'll store them covered in the fridge or the freezer for about a week or so in the fridge and they'll, they'll um, keep longer in the freezer. All right, let's try one of these. Love these for an afternoon snack. Mmm. They're so good. You can taste the almond butter, the cacao powder. It's like just the perfect amount of sweetness with just a little bit of maple syrup. You're gonna love these. And they're gonna give you so much energy. This is Sarah with Bella's Kitchen. And today we're gonna learn how to make a Dutch pancake. Um, I know we're all tired from the quarantine and we're probably all eating eggs and bacon. and uh, probably getting tired of the same breakfast. So I decided to make a Dutch pancake so you can see uh, something different that you can make in your cast iron. Uh, first, I went ahead and put a cup of milk. Then we have four eggs. We have one cup of flour. We have two tablespoons of melted butter. And then we just have a little bit of salt. So you go ahead and you put this in your blender. Uh, make sure there are no lumps. Just go ahead and this is pretty quick. Uh, again, make sure there are no lumps. Uh, you have everything in here. Uh, you want to. Go ahead and get your cast iron. Uh, put two tablespoons of butter. Um, make sure it's all melted. Um, as you can see in here, I had it already in high fire. High heat, I meant. All right. Once you have that with the butter, just make sure you just put it all in the cast iron. Your oven is preheated at 475 and you just go ahead and you put it in. Right now, you just wait 17 to 18 minutes. All right, look like thumbs up. And here you go. This is so pretty, isn't it? Um, it was really easy to make, so once you're ready baked it and have it ready to go, you can just go ahead and sprinkle some sugar, powdered sugar, and um, you can put some maple syrup and you can put some fruit, and you have it. 
Hey guys, it's Pat from Sweet Yellow Cohen Bread. How are you all doing during this quarantine time? I know I'm ready for us to all get back and this be put behind us. While we're still quarantining, we still have to make some meals and some treats. One of my favorite little treats we found during quarantine time, my coworkers love it, is apple tortillas. Simple, you just need some tortillas. I like the Mission Soft Flour Tortillas. You do want them large, whatever brand. Some apple pie filling. Cinnamon and sugar. And butter. I'm gonna take out a flour tortilla. Tortilla, I don't ever say that right. My kids correct me, but that's okay. And then we're gonna just take your butter. You're gonna coat it. I went ahead and opened up the pie filling and put a little cinnamon on it. I do like organic cinnamon a little better. I just think it tastes richer. And then we're gonna take this tortilla, lay it flat. You hear it sizzling, that's the butter. Then you're gonna take your apple pie filling. You're gonna put about two and a half spoonfuls on top. You're gonna spread a little your organic cinnamon or whatever cinnamon you have, a little sugar. You're gonna take out another tortilla. And you're gonna coat it with some butter on top. And this is your topping. You're gonna actually, if you know how to make a pancake, it's similar to making a pancake. And we're gonna put this right on top. Now, take a spatula cake sir, whatever you have. You want to pat down that pie filling just a little bit. Pat down is patting it down. See it getting crispy? I'm going to keep my fire turned up just a hair, about seven, eight. I have a gas stove. When it gets good and crispy, you're going to flip it. Once you flip it, it's going to cook on the top. You just flip it over. Pat it down again. Now, Go ahead and add some more cinnamon. To me, can't have enough cinnamon. Some more sugar. Once that's done, you're ready to go. Have a good day. Pray for each other and hope we all get out of this soon. Thank you. Hey everyone, Denise Albert with Cooking in Bloom in my backyard. We're gonna cook together. Today I have a recipe that's actually a family recipe that goes back to my childhood. This is a fried rice recipe that we used to have often in my home while I was growing up. I've put a little twist on it today and I'm gonna add some fermented kimchi because of the health benefits. Tons of probiotics that are really good for our gut. I'm going to add just a little bit of oil and you want to do this on a high heat because this is a stir fry method. My mom would always do this and I didn't understand why but now I do know you want to do the rice the night before and let it sit out because it'll still be warm in the morning to use but also all of the starches from those rice kernels will make this rice a little stickier which is what you want. So what I want to start out with is some onion. Now you can use green onion here. I've just got a little bit of white onion. And then I'm going to add some ham. This is just a quarter cup of ham, just a little bit for flavor. A little bit of ham, bacon, all of those cured meats goes a long way to flavor a dish. So you don't need much. And I'm just going to stir fry this. Now this was a family favorite recipe. My sister and I loved this. When my mom would say, oh, I'm gonna make fried rice tonight, we'd get so excited. And the story goes, when I was in junior high, my mom decided to stay at home and she started a little babysitting business in our home. And the first kids that she babysat 
was a family that had moved to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where I'm from, from China. And these two kiddos, they were so sweet, but they couldn't speak much English. They didn't like American food, so every day their mom would make them some delicious looking Chinese food so that they would actually eat something. And we were just so intrigued. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, that food looks so good. And then she taught my mom how to cook it. So my mom would actually go over to her house. She taught my mom how to make this rice. She taught my mom how to make these delicious, authentic egg rolls. This is such an interesting way, you know, of course, to connect with people and how we were able to connect with these folks from China. So I've got this cooked off. You can see that it's uh, browned a little bit. The onion is translucent. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the rice. I'm gonna eyeball it, maybe a cup and a half of rice. And then we're just gonna stir fry that again on high heat. All right, so we just want that to warm through and I wish you all could be here because I can smell that. There's really nothing better than caramelized onion and ham. <laughs> so now what I want to um, add is the egg. And I've just got egg here whisked. Nothing in it, no seasoning, no milk, no nothing. We'll just add that to the side and we'll just let that kind of cook. And you just need to incorporate it into that rice. Oh wow, it looks so good, so good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the peas. These are just frozen peas. And I've got about a half a cup here. And then for a pop of color, I decided to add some shredded carrots. Add a quarter of a cup or, you know, a half a cup. You can add as much veg as you want. And now for the kimchi. Now the kimchi, like I said, is fermented. It's absolutely delicious in a lot of different recipes, but I decided to add it here today because I thought it would go so well. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of kimchi to the side. It's cabbage, onion, and carrot. It has been fermented in a, a vinegar. And I wanna show you, here's my sesame seed oil. And oh gosh, this is just so delicious as a finishing oil. You just add just a drizzle to the top. This is delicious, you guys. Brings back memories. Thanks for joining me today in my backyard. This was fun.